All right, I'm back in part 471 of <laughs> building a color classifier. Now, what am I gonna do here? In the, the previous video, I created the architecture of my model. A hidden layer, an output layer, uh, a TF, TensorFlow.js sequential model. Two dense layers, activation functions, units, etc. Now, at the end of the last video, I said, oh, the next thing I need to do is define an optimization function uh, and then uh, compile the model. Well, I really botched that. Because what I, there's three things I need to do. Optimization function, loss function, and compile the model. And so I kind of conflated optimization and loss. I'm optimizing against the loss, but the optimizer that I want to make is, uh, I can use const, I guess, here. I, 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 again, I'm very inconsistent about when I'm using const versus let. Maybe I'll go back and clean up that code at some point. I'm going to say, um, uh, I can get it from TF train uh, stochastic gradient descent. Um, and I can create a learning rate, which I'm going to say is like 0 0.2. Um, so this. So one thing I need to do is create an optimization function, right? And there are different options, and we can try other options. Stochastic gradient descent is the one that I basically used in almost all of my examples and covered in detail in my how to build a neural network from scratch sort of series. And the idea of gradient descent is walking along, trying to go down the graph of the loss function to minimize that loss. So what is the loss function that I want? Well, if I'm going to say model.compile, I believe this is a, whoops, this is a function that I'm going to write with a configuration option. And one of the things, when I compile the model, I need to specify opti optimizer, optimizer. Now this is very awkward that I just uh, called this up here, but um, no, that's fine. And then, the other thing that I need to specify is a loss function, mean squared error. So this is typically what I have done in previous examples, if you look at my uh, XOR coding challenge. But this is now going to change, and the reason is because I am using an activation function called softmax. So let's talk about what softmax is. Softmax, question mark. Okay, so Remember, the output that we want from the neural network is a probability distribution, right? What's an example of what an output might look like? It might look like this. There's nine values, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0 0.7, 0, 0, right? Uh, whoa, 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 my math is off. 0 0.6, right? These all add up to 100%. This is the idea. We're, what, we're, what this is saying is this particular RGB color has a 60% chance of being you know, bluish, if that's the particular label that matches with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, index number 6. A 10% chance of being reddish, a 10% chance of being purplish, and a 2% chance of being greenish. This is what we want. Now the training data is encoded like this, and maybe we can actually look at it right next to it. Maybe this is what the training data looks like. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. A one hot encoded vector, because actually the correct label for that color is greenish. So I need a loss function. Well, I haven't got, sorry. <laughs> Let's, I'm, I'm going. Cross entropy and softmax are linked together. They're used together, so that's why I just can't remember which one I'm explaining. But I need a loss function to give me the error between this probability distribution and this probability distribution. But I need my neural network to generate a probability distribution in the first place. Uh, activation function, as you might recall, is something that squashes any number into some range. It's one way of thinking about it. The sigmoid function, if we were to graph that, sigmoid function, it uh, looks like, oh boy, I can never do this. Uh, something like this. Oh boy, that's a terrible graph of it. You can look it up on Wikipedia. Something more like this, right? And this, the top is one, the bottom is zero. So any number given to sigmoid results in a number between zero and one. Softmax is an activation function that not only squashes the values that are coming into these outputs between zero and one, but guarantees that they all add up to one. Now you might say to yourself, that's easy. That's very easy to do. I, we do this all the time with normalizing data. I could just find, I could just take all of the outputs, add them all up, 
and then divide each one by the sum of the total, right? Because let's say somewhere I have these numbers, two, two, um, one, five, right? I can add all these up and they're going to add up. Oh, look at that, they added up to 10. Let me divide by 10. I have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. So this, we could do this sort of like divided by the sum as our activation function, but that's, but, but this is not gonna give us an, ac a, a, an accurate probability distribution that we want for this scenario. And softmax is another way of doing the same thing with more, uh, that, that sort of expands the difference. This one makes this one much more likely, expands the difference between these different values. So the way that softmax works is we actually do the following. Um, you know that, <laughs> hold on, I gotta find an eraser. You know that natural number E? for natural log, 2.7 something, I think. Well, what if I said and took e squared, e squared, e to the one power, e to the fifth power. What if I took all of these, what if I took all of these and uh, then added them all up and made that, the, I'll call that the e sum, and then just took each one of these values and divided by e sum. That is softmax in a nutshell. You know the only thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a, like a tan tangent video that you can go and watch now where I'm actually gonna write the code for the softmax function, which I think will explain it better. I don't think it's worth doing that in this video, um, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to do that in a separate video, so look for, that in the link, look for a link to that in this video's description. Um, just to like, just to be sure, that I'm right about this, we can now go here. And this makes it look like, oh my God, this is like the craziest, scariest thing in the world. But you can see it right here. The softmax function for a vector of values z means take every value e to that z index j power, divide it by the sum of all of those values. And so that uh, and you can see here the probability theory, the output of the softmax function can be used to represent a categorical distribution, a probability distribution over k different possible outcomes. All right, so again, in a separate video, I'm gonna write the code for softmax and actually it's right there in tensorflow.js also has functions for doing it. Um, and I'm gonna compare what those outcomes look like versus just summing and dividing. But I'm gonna move on and say, so if I've established that softmax is what I'm using as the activation function for the last layer, the output layer. The question then becomes, what loss function should I use? How do I calculate the error between the known, the target outputs with the training data and what the, what the model generated during the training process? So again, mean squared error would work here, but I am gonna change that. Oops, <laughs> it sounded like to categorical cross entropy. Why am I using that? So first of all, what is entropy? Entropy is a term that refers to like the chaos associated with the system. So you can think of a probability distribution as like being very chaotic or more or less chaotic. So what the cross entropy function is a loss function designed to compare two probability distributions and look at how much chaos there is in between them. The cross entropy between them. And the math of it is, you know, mean squared error is like subtract, take this one minus this one, and then do like the square root, uh, or square it, then do the square root, or maybe don't do the square root, then add them all together. Mean squared error, right? I've talked about that. You can look it up. It's a pretty simple mathematical function. Cross entropy, if we look at it, we, I'm, again, I, we could build this, I could build this in a separate video, which might be worth doing as well, is really just the, if, if I have two, probability distributions P and Q, I'm looking at the minus, negative, the sum of one probability distribution times the log of the other probability distribution. So again, you can research what cross entropy, how the math behind it works more in more detail, and maybe I'll do a video about that for those who are interested. Um, but at the moment, the important thing to, to where am I, <laughs> over here, the important thing to realize is that softmax is an activation function for generating a probability distribution and cross entropy is a loss function that works well for comparing two probability distributions. So for a classification problem, those are the two things we want to use. So we've done that. 
oh, I think I'm done with this video. Let me just, uh, let me just kind of like run this code. Oh wait, we got an unknown loss. Ah, oh hey, I think this is lowercase e. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, um, so now we're done. What is the next step? What am I going to do in the next video? It is now time for me to call model.fit. Model.fit is actually the function I will call with the x's and the y's that I've prepared in a previous video to train the model. Right? I really only got two steps left and I'm sure there's going to be lots of other stuff that I'm forgetting about right now. I want to train the model, then I want to use the model to give me a label for a new color that the user is going to specify. Okay? So in the next video, I'm going to actually add model.fit. See you then.